Monomyth is a first-person action RPG dungeon crawler slash immersive bread baking simulator developed by Rat Tower for PC with a demo available on Steam. Taking inspiration from the Kingsfield series, Monomyth puts you in the role of the second son of King Faradon III, who has sent your older brother to lead an expedition to the ruined fortress of Lysandria. The gods are angry, and they've caused storms to ravage the land, forcing people to move underground. It's said that deep within the fortress of Lysandria, there is a magical item known as the primeval seed, which might, might calm the gods and stop them from being such dicks. Unfortunately, the expedition led by your brother hasn't been heard from for a while, so you head out to Lysandria with the hope of saving your brother and finding the primeval seed. Monomyth checks all the boxes for a Kingsfield-like. Dying, apocalyptic world, check. Role of a prince, check. Cursed place to explore, check. MacGuffin to find, check. Its setup is pretty much that of Kingsfield, the ancient cities. Except in that game, the expedition was led by a great hero, not your brother. And you were venturing forth to put a cursed object back in its place to save the world, instead of just trying to find an object that supposedly can save the world. But still, the broad strokes are there. Nothing wrong with any of this. In fact, it's about time more games took inspiration from Kingsfield instead of Souls. Because let's face it, FromSoft is never going to return to the series. We'll never see a Kingsfield 5. So any indie dev or small studio that can pull it off competently is on my radar. You start off building your character, which is not a nod to the Kingsfield series, where you just leveled up linearly by killing enemies and collecting XP. I like the customization available. There are a lot of stats and skills to invest in, and you can build your character in any way you see fit. There's no way to customize the look of your character, but you can change the aura surrounding them. Neat. After creating your character and watching the short intro, you start in a dungeon of sorts, where you've been magically teleported into Lysandria. For a one-person development team, the game looks highly polished. It has that shiny PS3, Xbox 360 gleam on all of the objects. However, the detail is definitely a bit more modern. Maybe like an early PS4 game. Anyway, I think the game looks great. Lots of detail in the environments, and with hardly any technical issues to boot. The level design is intricate in all the best ways. Paths loop back on themselves providing plenty of shortcuts and secrets. And with all the skills related to exploration, like search, lockpicking, and so on, there are multiple ways to get around different obstacles. You've also got box stacking, so immersive sim confirmed. Combat feels pretty good, though sometimes things feel a bit floaty. Like there should be more impact to your blows. You have a stamina bar that slowly drains as you attack, and there are several different attacks that you can perform by holding the attack button and pressing certain directions, like a stab attack with the bone and sword. I'm sure different weapons will allow for different movesets. You also have ranged attacks with bows and projectile weapons as well. Magic also exists in the game, though I didn't try out a magic build for this playthrough. I found a lot of spells though. Addendum. Hey, this is future me, which uh, for all of you will just be present me for, you know, whenever you're watching the video. Uh, anyway, I realized after I finished editing this that just saying there was magic without actually trying it out was pretty dumb. So I apologize for being such a lazy piece of sh**. I decided to do another playthrough with a magic build, and yeah, there's actually some neat stuff to talk about with it. You can find a spell called Magic Arrow pretty early after you get access to the fortress area. There's also another one behind this locked gate in the first building you can enter and explore, but I couldn't figure out how to get to it. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with this wall that looks like it can be destroyed. I tried explosives though and couldn't get it to break, so unfortunately I don't know about that one. Anyway, you set magic at the resting altars, and then you can cast it with C if you're playing on keyboard. Be careful though, Magic Arrow has an AoE property that will end up hurting you, and in my case one-shotting me, since I didn't put any points into vitality for old Spelljammer here. Magic also seems pretty powerful, especially if you're pumping points into your intelligence stat and the arcane connection skill. I managed to cheese this big guy because apparently he's not programmed to follow you onto this elevator. <laughs> yeah, take that, loser. So yeah, magic seems pretty neat, and again, sorry for being a shitty fucker in the original script. And now back to the video. There are also stealth mechanics and lean buttons that allow you to peek around corners. I didn't manage to pull off a sneak attack, unfortunately. Maybe if I would have invested more in the sneak skill. I like the interactivity, though. Early on, I found a corpse with an arrow stuck in it and was able to swat the arrow out of its body and collect it on the ground. In fact, there's a ton of interactivity all over the world, including baking bread. I think Ultima 7 might have been the first game to include bread baking. It's definitely an Arx Fatalis, but yeah, baking bread is the true test of a good CRPG. Just messing around and seeing what you can accomplish in the environment is half the fun. Like playing this harp.
There are tons of nooks and crannies to search for goodies, locked chests and doors enticing you with items behind them, and little notes with lore bits to find. According to the dev blog, the finished game is going to have NPCs. In fact, it's supposed to have a whole hub town full of them with quests and trading and all of that. In one section of the demo, there's a rat NPC, which is fitting for the developer's namesake. And after I found him, I felt bad about killing his rat kin. Forgive me. Music is pretty sparse for the most part, allowing you to get immersed in the great sound design. I do like the little jingles that play when you find key items or new spells though. The intro music is also pretty killer. Addendum. I was planning to let the intro music play here, but it gets a copyright claim on YouTube. So instead, just listen to me ramble for a few seconds about how the intro music is really good. Nice renaissance-esque string number that sets a somber mood for the whole game. So uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, Back to the video then. It's another lengthy Steam demo with this one, and considering all the different ways to build your character along with all the secrets to discover, it'll keep you occupied for several hours. The developer regularly updates a blog on the Steam page with their plans for the future, and the game looks to be coming along nicely. I've been following this one since before there was even a demo available on Steam, so I can't wait to see how it's going to turn out. So, Monomyth. Check it out. Dungeon Chill. Out. Forgive me.